Hey there, welcome back to Reddit Dating, the best channel for Reddit cheating stories. Be sure to like, subscribe and hit the bell notification for more stories like these. Now, let's get into the video. Wife had a ONS, got herpes, in walking away. I'm submitting my story now since I've been a lurker on here for a year and a half and have read many other people's stories. I was hoping for some form of enlightenment or clarity that would assist me in my predicament. There are some tragic stories on here, but there are also some gems. I hope you can take anything away from my narrative or that it may provide you with some clarity on your path through whatever you're going through. My wife, 34F, departed for a brief business trip on a Thursday at the end of July in 2018 and flew home Saturday morning. That evening, my wife and I, 32M, went to my stepfather's birthday dinner and nothing appeared out of the ordinary. We conducted our usual Sunday routine of grocery shopping, errands, and getting ready for the work week. When the work week began the following Monday, everything seemed normal, and we texted as usual throughout the day, but on my way home from work, she texted me, I believe. I have a yeast infection, and I'm going to get it checked out. I remarked, oh, it stinks, and made a joke, hopefully it's not an STD, ha ha. She replied with a lol and that was the end of it. She texted me a few hours later before I saw her and said, your statement earlier about it being an SDD was strange. You don't think I'm cheating on you, do you? I sort of smiled and texted back, no ha ha, but something about her statement bothered me a bit. I went back to what I was doing without thinking anything of it. In retrospect, this was red flag number one. After two days, she said that it had become worse and that she was returning. I thought to myself, man, I feel awful for her since I know she's experienced something similar to this before, but never this severe. She returned home from the doctor for the second time, saying she now had thrush and a bad yeast infection. I recall wondering to myself, what is thrush? And she explained that it's a throat infection. I remember telling her, well, if you're ill, stay away from me because I don't want to become sick, and I'm so pleased I did. All of this, in retrospect, was red flag hash too. She remained mostly bedridden for the following several days and into the weekend. She phoned into work and completed some work tasks from home. I recall not going too near to her those few days, just sort of staring at her when she was in bed or on the sofa feeling horrible. She was visibly ill and there wasn't much I could do. The next week, when she began to feel better, I realized something was wrong with her. When I got home from work one day, she was sobbing on the sofa. When I asked her what was wrong, she claimed she was going to visit a counselor. I was perplexed, but I responded okay and asked whether I was going or if I needed to go. She responded no, that she simply wasn't feeling herself and that she wanted to speak to someone. Okay, I said. Hash three red flag when I got out of the shower a few days later, she was. Weeping again on the bed. What's going on? I inquired. Is this the best it gets? She asked. Is this what we're looking for? Is this what you're looking for? Is this what I'm looking for? Is there anything more to life but this? I recall being taken aback since it took me a second to realize what she was asking. I didn't sure what to say, so I asked her, like, what do you mean? She just said, never mind, and I'm not sure what occurred after that. Then, on August 14, 2018, Around 9 p.m., as we are getting ready to go to bed, she begins weeping again. When I ask her, what's the matter? She bursts into tears. I know something has been happening on these past few weeks, and whatever it is, I just want you to know I love you, and whatever it is, we will work through it, I assured her. I can't tell you, she replied. If I tell you, you will not want to work things out. It was at that point that I began to feel butterflies slash adrenaline, or whatever you want to call it strike my stomach, and I said, please tell me. Then she dropped the bombshell, I had a one-night stand. It was at that point that all the red lights, all the tiny things that had happened in the preceding weeks, suddenly came together, like a giant. Here's the deal. When she finished her duties for the day, she headed to a pub for a drink before returning to her hotel. She sent me a photo of the beer she was sipping, and I texted her the nightly love you good night. She met a man with the same name as mine at the pub while she was there. 
she ended up chatting to him all night and drinking a couple more drinks before leaving the pub around 2 a.m. They returned to his residence, where she sucked his, and they had intercourse without a condom. When I inquired whether he cumed in her, she replied no, and that he pulled out and did it on her stomach, but I'm not sure. He had herpes and ended up spreading it to her, and the yeast infection and thrush in her throat were the result of the herpes breakout. When she informed me what had occurred, I was completely crushed, horrified, surprised, and in disbelief. I was very screwed up for a few months after D-Day, so much so that I had to go on medicines for a bit to get back on track. I knew something was wrong with me since I felt like absolute all the time, and it turned out I had a blood pressure of 149-127. It's no surprise I was miserable. We had a terrific marriage, in my opinion. Everyone's favorite pair was us. My father even referred to us as Ken and Barty. I'm just trying to provide some perspective since we weren't dysfunctional or had any severe and evident marital issues, but I think what transpired demonstrates otherwise. When I informed some of my close friends and relatives, they all looked at me with wide eyes and said, are you serious? It came as a complete surprise to me and everyone who knew us. She's been seeing a therapist for the last several months, and she's been delving into everything that occurred. The whys, hows, and whats of it all. She's told me she has no idea why, out of all the times she's been hit on by males, she caved in this time. It doesn't really matter since what's done is done, and all it takes is one incident to bring a marriage to its knees. She did state that he made her feel loved, that he paid attention to her, and that he validated her by telling her she was beautiful. If that's all it took, she has her own problems to cope with and sadly, she doesn't want to be mature enough to express them or admit that something was really wrong before it was too late. I realize that it takes two to tango, and I had a part in all of this, but I cannot accept responsibility for how she behaved, treated me her, our marriage, or the devastation she created. But I can see where I might have done better as a spouse. Should have been more attentive, more present, or just more of whatever it was she needed from me instead. Lessons were learned as a result. Despite the fact that we have been apart for about a year and a half, this continues to be a major hurdle in my life. I've made the decision to leave her in our marriage, and I'm finding it difficult to accept since this was never my plan. She really wants to be with me and make it work, but the price is too high for me right now. I feel she has attempted to do the right things over the preceding year and a half in order to make it work, but with the SDD in play, I am unable to support her. With all that has occurred and knowing the circumstances, I am just unable to do it. And I think that when I say I am unable to do it, I really mean that I do not want to do it. This act was uncalled for and selfish in my opinion, and the scorn and humility were both overwhelming. Her reference to it is due to the fact that she now realizes she has ruined a perfectly normal marriage and wishes she could go back in time and undo what she has done. However, she made her choices that night. Her path was paved by a large number of people who helped her along the way. I'll never understand how she was able to accompany him out of the bar, into his car, along with him on the drive, to his house, inside his house, and into his bedroom without anybody noticing. In all of that, there are so many gates and red flashing lights and ringing bells that it's ludicrous, yet she made all of those selections on her own. I've made an effort to be cognizant of my pride and keep it under control, and I'm beginning to wonder why I can't get much farther with her. Everything, in my opinion, comes down to values and beliefs, and what has happened thus far goes against everything I believe in and stand for, resulting in a great deal of cognitive dissonance. After that, there's the herpes problem, which will never go away and will always serve as a constant reminder of what she did so I've opted not to take the chance of contracting the virus, both cognitively and emotionally. It's simply too much for me right now. In addition, I don't view her in the same light or have the same opinion of her as I did before. In her, I've lost all esteem and regard for her. This onion has many layers, and it's incredible how something as simple as this can have such a profound impact on your whole life, both physically and emotionally. Thank you for taking the time to read this. I hope this has been of some help to you. Thank you for your time. Please keep your cool. You still have a life to live.